Okay. Starting. I'm live now. Um, so, like, if any of you have been around for a while, you know that I'm, like, the only thing I do consistently is do things inconsistently. So, maybe someday I'll be consistently consistent at something. <laughs> um, so, uh, I have no idea when I will be ready to publish and release um, back this up a bit publish and release uh, book two of the Lodestone Chronicles I have um, I might have to do some like rebranding on the series because the cover art I'm gonna have to go a different route than I did before and I want them to all have similar covers so we might have to do some rebranding maybe a new title for the book one but the story won't change but regardless I'm working on book two um, it's written but I'm going to go through this draft and I'm going to go through and I'm going to read aloud and highlight anything that needs to be tweaked and um, I might re-rate, rewrite a few sections but for the most part any day I could probably send it off to the copy editor. I gotta email her and find out if she can fit me in this coming year. Um, I'm not going to make any promises about when it's going to be ready but I thought you would enjoy participating with me as I as I um, read it out. Little Bear is having a nap, so I'll just go as long as I can. If he wakes up, I'm going to have to just, um, you know, what's the term for just, uh, just going to have to leave. I'm trying to think of like a sassy term for that, but nothing comes to mind. <laughs> Such a good writer. Okay, I'm a writer, not a talker. Um, <clears throat> so, how do I do this? <clears throat> this is all weird now because I made this smaller. Anyways, I'm going to have, um, if I'm making weird, weird faces, it's, I'm going to have the document open on my computer. I might not be able to see Facebook at the same time, but enjoy the reading. <clears throat> I don't know the title yet. I'm thinking maybe Whispers of Star and Sea or Harbinger of Star and Shadow. Stars and Shadows? I don't know. Let me know what you think as you as you listen. Um, so, scene one. I don't really have it broken up into chapters yet, but scene one. Diya Maya should have been born a sailor. Always she was drawn to the sea. Its power, its never-ending claim on the horizon, its depths, full of secrets, irresistible secrets. She loved everything about the sea, and its scent always exhilarated her and made her forget her worries. Today, its secrets had not been Today, its secrets had not been so pleasant. But she needed to know them. She was not innocent. One could not be raised the daughter of Queen Esmeray and maintain their innocence. She had spent long enough watching Esmeray in the dance of her shadows that she felt like the sea herself with how many sec blah, blah, with how many secrets she kept buried. Sorry guys. Now she had one more secret. But this time it was not Esmeray's, but her own. Tetsu told her to keep it hidden from Esmeray for as long as she could, for her own safety. Tetsu didn't trust Esmeray, her very own daughter. She's calmed since having you in her life. It's true, but I know her. I know my daughter. She is violent and ruthless and horribly insecure. For someone as powerful as she, that is a dangerous mix. Tetsu was scrubbing at Dee's hands, and she dropped the right one before finishing with the thumb. Her dark eyes caught Diaya's and made her shiver. Was the bottom of the ocean that black? Esmeray is going to be furious. She needed the priest. She has spent years getting our girls into his house to gather intel, and now you've gone and killed him. It is best that she doesn't know you were the one to kill him. He killed Rhea, Dee said. <clears throat> Collateral damage. You know that, Diaya. How, how mad can Esmeray really be, Tatsu? She despised that man. Tetsu's black eyes, like pits of despair, had made her shiver. It isn't just the priest, Dee. He, has a he was a means to an end. There is a faction rising in the Temple of Light and Stone. 
Um, that needs to get edited. A group of young and zealous men following an unnervingly powerful man. Esmeray has been trying to prevent his Esmeray has been trying to prevent his coming into power. The Temple of Light and Stone has never wanted her on the throne. They believe she killed King Domner so she could have power. They can't do anything to her. She is in complete control. This kingdom, what is left of it, is bursting at the seams. It was brought together by a power very different from Esmeray's, and she is struggling to keep it together. That won't stop her. After the peak of her days, no, it wouldn't. But she's tired. You are all that keeps her alive. <clears throat> the gold chains at her wrists chimed, as if agreeing with Tetsu. The reminder renewed their sense of urgency. I'm taking care of that. My blood can heal her, she said, shoving her arms into the sleeves of a clean gown. Tetsu had never looked more tired than that moment, and Dee had known the woman a long time. Dee... Your blood's inherent power grows weaker each year. It will not sustain Esmeray for long. Cronin's disfavor weighs heavily on her. It will be fine. We'll figure this out together. I will kill the entire priesthood if I must to keep Esmeray happy. Tetsu hadn't been convinced, and if she was honest, she wasn't convinced either. Deep in her soul, unrest stirred. Something was wrong, not just with the situation, and not just with Esmeray. Those were obvious. Something was wrong with her and she had just gone and poked the dragon that wanted to tear through the chink in her armor and destroy her. She skipped up the stairs. For years, she had run up these stairs and ac across the palace walls. Never had she struggled for breath, but tonight, under the midnight moon, she had to pause to ease the burning in her lungs. The quick trip to the priest's quarters had, win had winded her more than she realized. She composed herself before ascending the last flight of steps at a more sedate pace. A balcony of stone with no railing jutted out into the crashing waves. Stairs spiraled down on the opposite side of the wall to the shore. At low tide, there was a pier at the base of the cliff that led out to where the queen's personal ships moored. It was high tide now, and the pier was underwater. I don't know, is that... Is that how you pronounce pier? P pier? Pierre. P I have no idea. <clears throat> Esmeray stood, robed in scarlet and black. Her ebony hair fell to the small of her back in thick waves. It was untouched by the wind blowing in off the ocean. <laughs> um, sorry, I got a comment and I want to see what it says. Keep the story going for young adults. And keep on reading the whole book to us today. <laughs> I don't know if I can reply. I don't know how to do this. Anyways, whatever. I'm just going to keep reading. Um, she paused and looked past her mother to the endless waters. The vast space scared her and piqued her curiosity. She closed her eyes and drew in a deep breath. Her ears rang with the symphony of waves and cacophony of seagulls. They searched for a familiar voice, a presence she'd known longer than anything else, longer even than Esmeray's dark smile. Come find me. It whispered. Not now, she replied, and pushed the beckoning voice away. She stepped forward into her mother's line of vision. Black eyes snapped to interrogate her. You're late. The woman's voice was always calm, always icy cold, always to the point. I'm sorry, I forgot something. What could have been so important you might miss the most important day of the month? I had to run an errand for a friend. She wasn't ready for it, as Marie's beautiful face contorted into a hissing cobra ready to strike. Don't lie to me, Diaya. I know where you were. She stepped back, her heart skipping a beat and shaking her balance. While the two of them usually made a bit of a show at their monthly rituals, it wasn't necessary. The gold that shackled each of her wrists did all the work, transferring the power from Dee's blood into Esmeray's directly. Still, it was their special moment together, their connection that nobody else could share but them. Now, though, as the clouds cleared and the moon's light fell on Esmeray's pale face, she knew something was wrong. The silver that gathered at the woman's temples and the crow's feet that pinched the corner of her, corners of her eyes didn't disappear. The gray tinge her perfect skin took at the end of each month didn't clear. 
Mother, what's wrong? You aren't getting better. The toxic shadow that Esmeray shouted herself in, pressing in around, pressed in around D. That's because the slowly weakening power of your blood has now been permanently tainted by your stupidity. She took another step back. It wasn't often that Esmeray's dark moods consumed her. From a young age, D had... D had grown adept at stemming them. A shadow crept up from the stone and tickled her ankle until goose flesh crawled up her calf and she shivered. I didn't do anything. I said, don't lie to me. She closed her mouth and bit the inside of her cheek. If she was still a child, she would have closed her eyes and ran to the calm part of her mind, where the friendly winds whispered. She wasn't a child, though. She couldn't keep running away from the things that scared her. He killed her. He got her pregnant and then had her killed. I don't care what he did. Your responsibility, your loyalty is to me. She looked down at the stone under their feet. She had failed. She knew how important the healing powers in her blood were to Esmeray. She'd selfishly put her own desires above keeping her mother healthy. She hadn't known, though, but she should have. The priest's death I could forgive, but your recklessness with my life I cannot. She couldn't stop one shoulder from raising, fending off a phantom blow. If I die, who is going to fight off the exile's army? He threatens to overtake the kingdom. Already he has inched his borders closer and closer to us. He has brainwashed our people, and now they are in the wilderness with him, starving to death. I am the only one standing between him and this city. And to make matters worse, that idiot priest, as much as I hated him, was controllable. Now who knows what faction of the temple will rise to power. We could find my throne usurped and me executed within the fortnight, and now you have driven the last nail into my coffin. No, there has to be another way. I will redo the cleansing ritual. I will redo the cleansing ritual. I will repeat it every night until next month when the full moon is back. It won't work. You've tainted yourself. Esmeray turned away and strode back towards the palace. She bit back the sour taste of tears. Mother, please, there must be something I can do to fix this. There must be something I can do to help you. You can cleanse all you want, Esmeray said over her shoulder but there is no way to undo the damage. You are useless to me. She lost the ability to breathe in that moment. The word useless hit her like a stone from a sling. She grasped her ribs, convinced there was a shadowy dart embedded in her heart. Tears welled in her eyes as memories of a man long forgotten filled her thoughts. Papa Dodo, take me with you. You must hear, you must stay here, Dida. His laughing black eyes were somber like all the joy he'd shared with her had been a lie. She clung to his wool cloak. I can help you, I can. He'd looked over her shoulder, and then his eyes had been steely when he gently pushed her away and rose. No, you can't. You're just a child. You would only be in the way. You're useless to me. She'd never seen the laughing man since then, the man whose stories took her across the world while she was tucked safely in his arms. He'd spent hours telling her about the great feats he would do, all for the love of his precious daughter. Now he was telling her he didn't want her. I thought she'd say precious granddaughter, I think. She turned and watched Esmeray's ebony head disappear down the stairs toward the palace. Light on her feet, as Tetsu taught her, she stepped backwards until she balanced on her toes with her heels hanging into the air off the cliff's edge. Useless, worthless, unneeded, unwanted. Her dark eyelashes shadowed her gaze as she drew deep breaths in through her nose. She plunged into the teeming ocean of despair, and in the cold depths, where only the most persistent rays of light sparkled, she found the voice. I want you. Then catch me, she said. She fell backwards as she had hundreds of times before. The reckless move, not an act of trust, but an act of defiance. The warm air felt cold as her body went screaming down towards the waves in an uncontrolled dive. She relished the feeling of the winds tearing at her hair, clothes, and whipping against her skin. All she fe as she fell, the voice remained silent. When her fall continued uncontrolled, she knew it was true. She was truly alone. She pulled in a deep breath, and the iron discipline of her muscles pulled her arms together in a V beneath her head, and her legs snapped together behind her. 
There was a breath of warm air just before she hit the water, and she could have sworn it wrapped itself around her before she cut through the waves. After that kind of dive, there was a moment where her mind went black as it adjusted to the pressure of the water. She paused under, allowing her body to adjust. Then, when her lungs demanded it, she instinctively turned and pointed herself upwards. When she exploded from the waves, salt in her eyes and nose, she finally forgot the smell of blood, but she didn't forget the sting of her failure. Well, that's um, the first scene. I'm going to go through and fix up the things I highlighted. Um, maybe I'll do this again. I'm not really sure what's going on with these comments. Anyways, peace out.